Good morning, students. Um, this is going to be our poetry and reading lesson for today. Um, and I'm looking at page 248 in your Mas Das book. Um, we're going to be reading three poems in a row. Um, and there are going to be three different styles of poetry. And at the end of it, I'm going to ask you to complete um, one of the activities. You, you can choose between two of them. All right. So let's start us off with the very first poem. This is called The Magnificent Bull. It's found on, found on page 258, and it's a Dinka traditional poem. <clears throat> My bull is white like the silver fish in the river, white like the shimmering crane bird on the riverbank, white like fresh milk. His roar is like the thunder to the Turkish cannon on the steep shore. My bull is dark like the rain cloud on the storm. He's like summer and winter. Half of him is dark like the storm cloud. Half of him is light like sunshine. His back shines like the morning star. His brow is red like the beak of the hornbill. His forehead is like a flag. Calling people from a distance, he resembles the rainbow. I will water him at the river. With my spear, I shall drive my enemies. Let them water their herd at the well. The river belongs to me and my bull. Drink my bull from the river. I am here to guard you with my spear. Um, so this is an interesting sort of poem. Um, it makes me have some cool images in my mind. Um, it starts off describing this bowl of different complexions, dark and light at the same time, um, and then has the idea of this um, person that's sort of allowing the bull to drink from the river and defending him. Um, it makes me think of almost like a nomadic clan um, that is a shepherder or a um, someone that protects their cows and stuff like that. Um, and it seems as though the bull has some sort of prominence and significance and, and um, the person is willing to protect it with a spear. Um, it's, a, it's an interesting poem. Uh, let's read the next two. This one's called Seashell. Now, this is not the seashell poem that you know. So this one has a lot of alliteration. Or sorry, on, uh, yeah, alliteration in it um, where you have the same sound being repeated which is found in a lot of tongue twisters. Seashell, seashell, sing me a song, oh please, a song of ships and sailor men and parrots and tropical trees, of islands lost in the Spanish main, which no man may ever find again, of fishes and corals under the waves and seahorses stabled in great green caves. Seashell, seashell, sing of the things you know so well. Our last poem, this is found on page 200 and... 52 is called Cat. Now, if you were in my grade 5 class, uh, we read an uh, entire poem, entire series of books, or a book with a series of poems in it called Love That Dog. Um, and this actually made me think of it. <clears throat> I want you to try to imagine what's happening over the course of this and, and why uh, this is happening. Cat, scat. After her, after her, sleeky flatterer, spitfire, chatterer. Scatter her, scatter her. Off her mat. Woof, woof. Treat her rough, get her, get her, whiskey spitter, catch her, catch her, green eyed scratcher, slather her, slither, hiss her, don't miss her, run till you're dithery, hithery, thithery, pss, pss, how she spits, spitch, spatch, can't she scratch, scritching the bark of the sycamore tree, she reached her arc and hissed at me, pss, pss, woof, woof, scat, cat, that's that. So I don't know if you you can imagine what happened in that. Um, I think we're in the perspective of a dog. And the dog has seen her, the cat and chases her up a tree. Um, and you're going to hear some cool um, use of um, uh, different styles of writing. Um, where we get onomatopoeias, which is when a sound um, is written as it's heard. Um, so you hear woof, woof, um, slither, slather. Um, pss, pss, right, those are all spitch batch. Those are all words that you so you would probably hear the cat actually make. Um, okay, so there are there are three poems we just read, um, and all three of them are different styles. Right, we have the first one, which was the magnificent bull, um, which had uh, they're all about animals, or they're they're all focused on um, sort of things in nature, um, and they should give you a different sense of what's happening in these poems. So there are two activities I'd like you to do, and you have to choose one. Um, the first activity is with the Magnificent Bull. Um, you can think of this as some sort of traditional um, poem that maybe has some sort of family generational feeling to it. Um, maybe this is a family of herders, and this is what they do, and, and they have a, a great amount of respect for a, the bull 
which may be, you know, their livelihoods based off of that. Um, and so it makes sense to um, sort of not worship necessarily, but just give it very um, respectful terms and stuff like that and, and um, describe it in a very, in a way that's very grandiose, um, which is where you see this first um, poem. Um, and so one of the activities you could be doing is if you look at the bottom of page 249 right here, um, I'd like you to read this over and see if you could um, create your own poem on something. So every family may have things that are very important to them. Um, so you could have, maybe you're a family that has lots of animals. Maybe you guys have like a, your own little personal hobby farm, right? And you have goats and the goats are important to you. And maybe that's something that your family is maybe even known by is like, oh, you're the family that has goats and, and you, that's what you do, right? Um, now families have different characteristics. Families have different things that are especially interested to them. Um, and if you can think of something that your family, or maybe you just personally have a very special interest to, um, you could write a poem about it. Um, now it says at the very end, memorize your poem and share your work with the classmates. Obviously that's not going to work. Um, but what I would like you to do is write it up and, uh, and send it off to me. Okay. This is going to be a two day activity, so it won't be due until tomorrow. Um, so that's one of the activities you could choose to do. Um, the other activity that you can choose to do is if you would like, um, you can, um, create, a poem about some sort of animal with special characteristics. Now, this is actually very, very, very similar to what we did in grade five um, when we talked about, um, I don't know if you guys remember those poems, but there was the poem that was called Horse and Dog. Um, and there's the one where the dog is sitting under the tree and it has um, wrinkly skin and it um, its jaw is uh, droopy and it bites la lazily at the fly. I don't know if you remember that poem. Um, I'll attach it on the document maybe. But um, this is this is the same sort of idea. So what I'd want you to do is choose um, an animal and then focus on some of its characteristics and uh, write a poem about it and try to create this sense of what is this poem or what, what are you trying to say about this animal? Are you trying to um, look, show it in a positive way or in a negative way? Um, what are some cool characteristics of it? Um, but that's what I'd like you to do in this second activity. So you can choose one of them. You can choose a special interest one for your family, or you can choose this part. Um, but one of those activities I'd like you to do, and this can be due for Thursday. Uh, I hope you enjoyed reading these poems. This was fun in the Mostos, and I hope you have a wonderful day.